Father, for taking care of us, each and every one of us, in our homes, in our jobs, and wherever we have been, our Father, we can celebrate your goodness this morning. And this is what we come to do, our Father, to bring to you a sacrifice of praise and a sacrifice of worship before your throne, your, your throne room of grace, because you have been good to us, our Father. And so this morning, our God, as we worship, we pray that my Father, even our worship, and what we do this morning shall be acceptable before you, that Father, it will rise up to you. And as we do this, our God, as we come just as we are, that Lord will accept us. And that dear Father, you meet with each and every one of us this morning at our points of individual needs. We worship you this morning, our Father. We lay ourselves before you and we say, may this morning and this worship session, our God, bring honor and praise unto you. For we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. 
Praise the Lord Church. We want to thank God for this morning. It is a beautiful morning. And uh, the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We come into the house of the Lord knowing that our God is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he shall be the same. He shall remain forever. That is in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Our God doesn't change. Circumstances and situations may change, but our Father does not change. And so this morning, as we worship him, as we praise him, we come to a God who does not change. The way he was yesterday is the same he is today, and the same he shall be forevermore. We can trust him, we can believe in him, and so as we worship him, let us worship him with that in our hearts, knowing that our God is the same as he has always been. Amen? Amen. 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 Same, my very present help in my 
Father, we bow before you this, morn this morning, calling upon your name, Jehovah God, calling upon you, Father Yahweh, 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 our Father who is, who will always be, who has ever been, and who will never, ever cease. We bow before you, Jehovah God, very humble and in total submission. We come before you, Jehovah God, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing, Father, and truly submissive, ready to hear from you, Jehovah. The Bible tells us, Abba, Father, where two or three are gathered in your name, whatever they ask, Abba, Father, if they believe, it shall happen, it shall be. Here, Jehovah God, we are asking, Abba, Father, as we know that you're here with us, because your presence is evident and we can feel your presence, whatever we shall ask, Lord Almighty Father, in prayer, Abba, Father, you shall actually I'll actualize it, Abba, Father. The Bible tells us, Father, that in the beginning there was a word, the word was with you, and the word was you. So we hold on to every promise that comes with the book of life. We hold on to every word that you have given us, Jehovah God. We hold on to every promise, Jehovah God, that you have made. And we hold on to the name of Jesus Christ, which is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. Abba, Father, we are humble before you. We are seeking you this morning. We pray that you accept our worship. Father, because this worship, Jehovah God, has been surrendered to you in total surrender. In total, total surrender. King of kings, Lord Almighty Father, we want to declare that you are God. There is none other but you. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to call you Abba Father. For Lord Jehovah God, when you surrendered your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross, Father, you paid the full price for us in Calvary. And Lord, we know that we are children of that covenant of Jesus. So Lord, as we surrender ourselves this morning, as we confess our sins this morning, as we say, Lord, we have followed our ways and we have fallen short of your glory. We pray, Abba, Father, that you will forgive us. We pray, Lord Almighty Father, that you allow the blood of Jesus Christ to wash us clean. Allow that very blood to soak into the roots of our foundation and remove every sort of sin, King of glory, that can hinder you, Father, from hearing us. So that, Lord, as we say more of you, Jehovah, that you hear us this morning. As we say, Father, come and replace every situation around us with the blood of Jesus. With your healing hand, Abba, Father, that you will answer our prayer. Father, we are gathered here, Jehovah God, in your name, knowing that you're hearing us. We are gathered here, Father, with no fear and no barriers. For we know, Lord, Father, that you have no limitations. So as we surrender our needs to you, King of glory, this morning, as we surrender the sick to you, Jehovah, we know that there is healing in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we ask that you visit on every sick person in this sanctuary and even on their audience who are watching. We are praying and decreeing the blood of Jesus Christ upon their life. From the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, we are speaking healing in Jesus' mighty name. Visit our hospitals, Jehovah. Visit our homes, King of glory. Visit our emotions at home and all the battles that are going through because of the season. And, Lord, please balance our emotions, Jehovah God, and cause healing in our families. Cause healing in the sick, Lord Almighty. Remember the doctors who are about to give up because of, of the things they're finding so mighty around them, King of glory, and grant them peace, Jehovah. We pray, Father, that you will allow that situation to be solved, Lord Father, so that that poor person who needs that care, Lord, is not abandoned. So that that person who's crying and wondering what next, Lord Father, they have hope because of what you're going to do. Above all, Father, we believe that you're God, our healer. So we pray that you will visit every sick person, Jehovah God, and heal them and touch them. And Father, we also pray, King of glory, for those who are brokenhearted because sickness is in all ways, Jehovah. There's that one who is very broken and giving up, Jehovah. We are saying, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, you can be their God, Lord. You are their God, Jehovah God. And as you have healed many families, that you're still going to be in their situation. And that, Lord Almighty Father, that whatever they are going through, Jehovah, that you will heal them this morning. Father, we are praying for those who are bereaved, Lord Almighty Father. We are praying for that father who has just left a family that needed him so much. A mother who's just gone, a child who's just died, Lord Almighty Father. Some of, some of our, our members, Father, some of the family members are mourning. They have the dead, Lord Father, in the morgues and they don't even know what next, King of Glory. 
Lord, we are saying the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord Almighty Father, can heal them, King of glory, heal their emotions. And Abba Father, we are praying that you will be their God, Lord. For Lord Jehovah God, we know that you're omnipotent, omnipresent, and there's nothing that can defeat you, Jehovah. We pray that the Holy Spirit in a very powerful way, you will replace those gaps, Jehovah God, and bring restoration to those families, Abba Father. This morning, Lord, we want to remember the children who are at home. My God and my Father, Jehovah God, these are children and they are our generation, Jehovah God, and our, and our hope for tomorrow. We refuse that those children, Father, can, will be scattered by many things that are going on, Lord. There are many issues around them, Father. There are many temptations and trials through the table, from the internet and maybe bad neighbors and bad things that are going on, Lord Almighty Father, around their environments. We are praying that you will give our children wisdom, Abba Father. We are praying that you will protect them by your own right hand. Jesus said, let these little ones come to me, King of glory. We are asking Jehovah God that you protect our children in the homes, Lord. We are praying, Father, that you will grant them wisdom so that they are able to learn, so that they can even take their time to even get to know who you are in their lives. We are praying for those parents, Father, who are responsible for the children around them, Lord. We we'll remember, Father, to be responsible and leave those children in the right hands, King of glory. We refuse, that for, uh, we refuse that those manipulators out there, Father, should take advantage of those ones who are not even mature enough, Jehovah God. We break all those spirits of alcoholism and drugs addiction, Jehovah God, and all those temptations that are surrounding our teenagers, Jehovah God. Spirit of our living God, we pray and refuse all those things in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying, Lord, that these ones, these ones will grow. These ones will grow, Lord Almighty Father, to be mighty men of this nation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, remember family. Abba, Father, you are the creator of family. You are the one who created our name and him, Father, for a reason. This is the only way, Father, that your kingdom will continue expanding, Jehovah God. You promised Father Abraham to step out and see the expanse of the stars in the sky. My God and my Father, families are under attack. We are praying, Jehovah God, Almighty Father, that this that is a spiritual war and you will rise up, Father, for families. That you will fight for them, Jehovah God. That families will not break again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you will bring them together, Abba, Father. That you will tie them together with a cord that can never be broken. We bring families before you, Father, in prayer. And we pray, Jehovah God, that families will bow down together and worship you in truth. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Abba, Father, there's a great family that has been attacked in a very serious way. And this is the family of church, Jehovah. My God, this is where we get spiritual feeding. You have told us, Father, that man shall not live by bread alone. Father, our churches are under attack. I pray in Jesus' name that you will remember churches, King of glory. That you will particularly remember Northgate, Jehovah God. I, I pray in Jesus' name that Lord Almighty Father... That you will stretch forth your hand upon Northgate, King of Glory. That you will open up the doors for Northgate, King of Glory. That our church will settle in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you will make a way even when there seems to be no way, Father. That you will, cancel, you will, uh, uh, you will um, encourage the leadership of Northgate. That, Lord Almighty Father, you shall use them for your glory and for your honor. That you will make a way in terms of their settlement, Jehovah God. Father, your church has never lacked. Father, you are not a beggar. Father, you are the owner of heaven and earth. And we are saying even now, you are the father of Northgate. And Lord, I know in Jesus' name that you will settle them. Remember all the members of Northgate, King of Glory. Each one of them in a very special way. They don't have an opportunity to gather here, Lord, to worship you, Father. But I know they are listening from their homes wherever they are. We are praying in Jesus' name that Spirit of our living God, you will stretch forth your hand. And touch each one of them in a very special way. That you will heal them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that Lord Almighty Father, even that the church is open, Father. They shall come and stand on this pulpit, Jehovah God. And we shall hear of your testimony. Abba, Father, we have prayed for so many things. But we want to want to remember the, our government. Jehovah God, you have given us leaders. And you have told us leaders are appointed by you, King of Glory. We pray that you will use them for your glory. We pray that you will change their ways, King of glory. We pray, Father, that you will tame them so that they become selfless servants, even as the rulers. We pray, Father, for some sort of just leadership that has no corruption and no thing, all those things that we are hearing about. We pray for a straightforward heart, Jehovah God. We pray that you will have a servant spirit, Lord. And we pray, Jehovah God, that their interest will be really to build this nation that you have given us. 
Father, we have prayed of so many things, King of Glory. But whatever we may forget to mention, Father, we know that you know all of it. We are about to hear the word of God. We pray that you prepare our hearts, King of Glory. That you will use uh, uh, Deacon Mokama, Jehovah God. Pour out your spirit and speak through his voice, King of Glory. For we, are hung we hunger for your word. We hunger for that word, Jehovah God. So that, Lord, it can feed us to walk out the rest of the week, King of Glory. For those things that we have forgotten to worship, to pray, Lord Almighty. We know that you know each one of them, Father. And that, Lord Almighty, Father, that you will answer our prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all the people around me say, Amen, amen and Amen. morning that the Lord has done. It has caused us to be there. We shall rejoice. Tutapiga mayoe, na makelele, na vikele, na shangwe. Zote kumtukuza mungu because he is good and he has done great things for us and we bless his holy name. Welcome to our service this morning. We are grateful that you could join us and we pray that you will be blessed because you came wherever you are in your sitting room. Uh, it's called Sofa Set Baptist Church. Uh, welcome, Karibu. Whoever is seated next to you, uh, because they are your family members, you are allowed to quarter them. There's not, there's nothing wrong. I can come on a stranger, elbow, uh, and uh, the Lord is going to bless you. We want to come into a time of just thanksgiving to God, worshiping Him with our giving. The Bible commands us to give. First of all, let us recognize that God is a giver. We want to give in emulation to our God. We don't give to God because he is needy. We do give because God has asked us to do so. By the way, let me say it here and now, that you don't give to church. Church is a channel. You give to God. And then God entrusts these resources to the church to administer them. And so when you're doing it, don't do it like you're doing to us. The Bible says that every person give as they have purpose in their heart. Not grudgingly under compulsion. We are not going to squeeze you to give. Choose. Make a decision to do it. And then that's where you will earn the blessing. And so God is going to bless you as you give, as you have purposed in your heart. We will receive those giftings and immediately they come into the church. They become God's property. We become stewards and we shall honor God even in our stewardship. So we thank you for your giving at the bottom of the screen, look at there. There are, there are numbers. These are our Mpesa bill. There are accounts where, where you can give it to. Please do so, and the Lord is going to bless you. Otherwise, thank you very much. I want you to join me, please, as we pray and give thanks for the opportunity to be able to worship God in our giving. Father, we thank you that we can worship you, not only God with our voices, not only God with the things that we have, our talents and our time, but we can also worship you with our treasures. We ask the Lord, O oh God, that you will receive them. God, as you receive them, O oh God, I pray the hands, the channels that God you have placed, that Lord will be good stewards of these resources. They will be used, O oh God, to honor and to glorify you. Father, Lord, that the needs of the church will be met, but also God, the needs of the people around us. We shall minister to widows. We shall minister God to orphans and the aliens among us. No one should go hungry, O oh God, when your resources have been availed. And so I pray the Lord, O oh God, those who will take the stewardship of these resources, O oh God, as you will guide them with your wisdom and they will do it 
that your name will be glorified. We are thankful, O oh God. We worship you and we adore you. Next, O oh God, we want to worship you by listening to your word. Speak it, O oh Lord. We are listening. These things you have prayed, believing and trusting. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God's people say it. God of yesterday, God of today, God of tomorrow, you're still the same, my very present help in the time of need, I will not forget you all. Thank you very much, worship team. Uh, we thank the Lord uh, for this opportunity yet again uh, to be able to meet and just uh, worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's yet another week where we can be able just to glorify the name of the Lord uh, and be able to be thankful that we have gone through the motions of the week and here we are, yet again to celebrate our God. Before we go in uh, to anything, I want just to make an announcement. Uh, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we'll have the corporate prayer and fasting, all in line with the church. We are praying for the church reopening and the church settlement. Now, these prayers will be as follows. In the morning, between 5 and 6 a.m., you shall join together the rest of the believers uh, on some Zoom link, which we will share. And we also will have prayers in the evening together at uh, 6.30 p.m. Now, this is in line with just beginning together and the day together and also closing the day together so that uh, 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 we actually synchronize our minds towards what you are looking into. So with regard to that, the lookout tomorrow, or basically to uh, later in the day, when the Zoom links will be shared with which we can be able to plug in. And I pray that as many of us can be able to participate in this, uh, because remember, this is God's work. It's supposed to be done God's way. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity just to be able to share your word. We do pray that, Lord, speak to us, guide us, Lord, and may your grace be upon us, King of Kings. We do pray that, Lord, may this word go out and speak to us all. Transform us, Lord. Use us also, King of Kings so that we may be able to glorify your name. It's my prayer that uh, at the end of this uh, day, glory and honor will always come back unto you. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. If you can turn to uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, it's a passage of scripture that we want just to uh, focus on this wonderful morning. Uh, so uh, 1 Kings Chapter 17, verse 1 to 14, and then we'll also look at uh, chapter 18, verse 1 to 46. There are a bit of long passages, so uh, bear with me. Now in uh, chapter 17, it says that Elijah, the Tishbite from Tishbe, in Gilad, said to Ahab, As long as the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Live here, turn eastwards, and hide in the Kerith ravine. East of the Jordan, you will drink from the brook. I have directed the ravines to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kerith of uh, Ravine and the east of Jordan and stayed there. The ravines brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up uh, because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath the region of Sidon, and stay there. I have directed a widow to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, the widow was 
there gathering sticks, he called to her and asked, Will you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have uh, a drink? As she was going to get it, he called and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely the Lord lives, the Lord your God lives, she replied, I do not have any bread, only a handful, a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son so that we may eat, and, eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as I have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from the, what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry, and the Lord, the, uh, run dry until the day of the Lord. The Lord sends rain onto the land. She went and did as Elijah had told her, and there was food every day for Elijah and her the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the words of the Lord spoken to Elijah. If you can turn to uh, chapter 18, verse 1, it says that after there had been a long, uh, after a long time, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain. So Elijah went to present himself before Ahab, and the famine was so severe in Samaria, and Ahab had summoned Obadiah and his palace administrator. Obadiah was a devout believer of the Lord while Jezreel was killing the prophets, the Lord's prophets. But I had also taken a hundred of the prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and had supplied them with food and water. Ahab said to Obadiah, go through the land to all the springs and valleys. Maybe we can find some grass to keep the horses and mules alive so that we will not have to kill any of our animals. So they divided the land they were to cover. Ahab going in one direction, and Obadiah going to the other. As Ahab was walking along, Elijah met him. Elijah recognized and bowed down on the ground and said, Is it you, my lord? Yes, he replied. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. What have I done, asked Obadiah, that you, may, you are handing your servants over to Ahab to be put to death? As surely as the Lord lives, there is no, not a nation or a kingdom where my master has not sent somebody to look for you. And whatever, whenever a nation or kingdom proclaimed you are not there, he made them swear that they could not find you. But now, you tell me to go over to my master and say, Elijah is here. I do not know where the spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave. If I go and tell Ahab that he does not, and he does not find you, he'll kill me. Yet your servant has worshipped the Lord since my youth. Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did to Jezreel, Jezebel? Uh, sorry, what I did while Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord, I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets in two caves, fifty in each, and supplied them with food and water. And now you tell me to go and to my master and say Elijah is here. Elijah said, as the Lord God Almighty lives, whom I serve, I will surely present myself to Ahab today. Verse 16 says that, on, so Obadiah met, went and met Ahab and told him, Ahab, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And when he saw Elijah, he said to him, is that you, you troublemaker of Israel? Have you not made trouble for Israel? Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed Baals. Now summon the people from all over Israel and meet in Mount Carmel and bring me 450 prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of Asherah who may eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word around Israel, and assemble the prophets on the Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If it is Lord, if, uh, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophet left. But Baal has 450 Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophet choose one for themselves and let them cut into, into pieces and put it on the fire, but do not set fire on it. I will prepare the other bull and uh, put it on wood and not set fire onto it. Then you will call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God, and the God who answers by fire, is, he is God. 
Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it. First, since uh, there are so many of you, call on the name of, the God, uh, of your God and do not light fire. So they took the bull and prepared and pre uh, 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 given to them and prepared it. And they called on the name of Baal from morning to noon. Baal answers, they shouted, but there was no response. No one answered. They danced around the altar and made, they had made. And by noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he says, surely he is God. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he is deep in sleep and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until the spears... Uh, 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 sorry, until the, their blood flowed. By midday, and they continued uh, their frantic prophesying until the time of evening sacrifice. But there was no response and no one answered. Then Elijah said to all of the people, come here. They came to him and he prepared the altar which had been torn down. And Elijah took two stones each for the tribes, 12 stones, sorry, each for the tribe of uh, the descendants of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, your name shall be Israel. With the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two shares of seed. And he arranged wood and cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, fill the four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. And, the wood. and they did it again. And he said, and they did it again. On the third time he ordered, and they did it the third time. The water ran down the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet of uh, Elijah stepped forward and prayed, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are the God of Israel, and I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your command. And answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burnt the sacrifice, the wood and the stones and the soil and licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let any one of them get away. They seized them and Elijah had, brought them down, had them brought down to Kishon Valley and slaughtered them there. And he said to Ahab, Go and eat and drink. For there is a sound of heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, and Elijah came off from the top of the camel, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked, and there is nothing there. Seven times Elijah said, go back. And on the seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand has risen from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. While the sky grew black and the clouds and the wind and heavy rain started falling, Ahab rode off to Jezreel. And the power of the Lord came upon Elijah and he tucked his cloak between his belt and ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Israel. We thank God for his word. It's a long passage, but I hope we can be able to uh, finish it in good time. Now, last week, if you were to connect this with last week, we spoke about what James speaks in James chapter 5 verse 17, that Elijah was human, uh, even as we are. Yet he honestly played that he prayed sorry, that it will not train and he did not train for, in the land for three and a half years. So the question that I've been asking in my mind, why did he pray that perhaps it will not train for three and a half years uh, and it did not train? Uh, so uh, that forms the basis of why we are going through this passage today. Uh, to begin with, I think I would like us to look at Elijah proclaiming that there will be no rain and he seeks uh, refuge in the brook of Cherith in obedience to God's word. These were not his, his words, they were God's word. So in uh, verse 1, Elijah said to Ahab, as long as surely the Lord lives, it shall not rain except at my word. Then you begin to ask yourself, why was he doing this? The people had turned away from God. And remember that King Ahab was the God who was, I mean, was the king who was reigning at that time. And he had led the people of God away from worshipping Jehovah to worshipping Baal. So Elijah had to get his attention. And God does this many times to try and get our attention uh, when things are running the way in the course that they should run. Sometimes life stops. Either you get sick, you have issues around you that turn you away around and you begin to focus on God. So Elijah needed to bring these people to a hold. And you can really see that 
for three and a half years, it's a long period of time for God to be trying to get your attention. Three and a half years is not a short time. But we see this also in Daniel chapter 11, verse uh, 32, uh, where the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Uh, and basically, a prophet of God, somebody who God has spoken to, can be able to do these unnatural things, speak into the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is in obedience uh, to God's word. No wonder we can be boldly uh, proclaim God's word. But you need to know who God is. You also need to know what his word says before you do this. And we draw back our attention to when uh, the disciples of Jesus were beaten. Seriously. Uh, I mean, they were unable to, to, sorry, they were unable to, to, to bring out a demon out of somebody. And remember, some guys also pretended they would be able to bring out demons out of uh, uh, somebody who was possessed and they were beaten uh, in, in a serious way because they did not know God's word. Or even if they knew God's word, they didn't believe. So in verse 2 to 4, Elijah goes and hides, he obeys. Uh, remember, it's a time where it's flourishing, uh, but the famine is not there, and he does what Noah does. He just obeys in the midst of it. So he obeys and stays in the brook. And one of the interesting things is that God supplies him there. So in the morning and evening, bread and meat were supplied to him, and he drank from the brook. So God is supplying through the ravines. Ravines are equivalent to what now today. Uh, uh, I was checking it out and I was seeing that uh, uh, it's equivalent to the crow. Uh, it's a species of it actually, uh, but a bit bigger. Uh, so it will bring food. And remember, these are birds that kind of tend to snatch food away from you. But they're actually now supplying him with food, bread in the evening, in the morning, and then he will drink from the brook. But remember, it dried up after some time. And God gave him a command to actually go to where the widow was in Zarephath. Friends, if you are obedient to God's word, he will literally feed us wherever we are. He will take care of things that bother us. No wonder in Matthew chapter 6, the Bible tells us that look at the birds of the air. They neither sow any seed nor reap or gather in barns. Yet the Lord, our God in heaven, actually feeds them. And the question is posed to us here by our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you not more valuable than they? And of course, it goes on to talk about worry. But the main catch here is that God supplies our everyday needs. I like what Dikonjoro here said. A lot of these institutions and where we are and our friends and our salaries, our jobs are conduits of God's supply. But the main thing is, it is God. And you, the connection is there, but he will use other instruments around you to be able to uh, bring uh, forth supply to you. Quickly, if we delve into the second part of it, is that Elijah was further instructed to go to the widow of, uh, in Zarephath. Now the brook dries, there is no more supply from these ravines, and Elijah is told to go to a widow. Now two things that run into my mind here is a widow providing for a prophet. Uh, in the days of the Bible, and uh, widows were mostly supplied to. They didn't supply. So God is using very unusual uh, kind of uh, scenarios. First is birds which take away from you are actually supplying. And the second part is that where a widow is supposed to be receiving from society, she's actually giving. We need to, God, to read actually God's word and hear from him. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus answered, It is written... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What has God been speaking to your life that you need to believe and actually uh, open up your heart to be able to receive from God? In verse 12 to 14, uh, the widow said she did not have bread. Like many of us, she said, what I just have is enough for me to be able to cook and die. Cook for my son and eat and die. She hesitates because... She does not understand who God is at this point. She doesn't understand the provision of God. But Elijah knew his God, and that's why he would be able to tell her, as you bring me water, bring me bread. He was asking for over and above what uh, he had initially asked for. This is asking without shame. 
What is it that you're reservedly looking and saying, God, I really need it, but uh, from my means and where I am, uh, let me take something lighter. We need to go before God without shame. So the widow went and did according to Elijah's uh, instructions, and she cooked, and the Bible records that for many days, the bean of flour was never used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. So in that home, there was provision. That home of the widow, which uh, most likely will be the most unusual places of supply, because God will have perhaps even sent him to go to a palace to be fed where normally there will be more provision, but here, it never ran dry. Those that God uses to bless are never your provision, but rather they are instruments of God's provision. So do not look up to man, look up to God, the provider. Of course we say thank you to people who have come through for us, but uh, look at it as God providing, mostly. Look at it as God providing. He's just using somebody as an instrument. And if you ever bless somebody, don't think that you are their God. Just look at it as that you have been obedient to God's call. In verse 17 to 18, the widow son became seriously sick and died. And the widow asked Elijah, what have I done? Uh, what have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to bring my sin to remembrance and kill my son? She was beginning to see this is a man of God. He's in her house and things now are not happening well, and perhaps she's thinking of something she had done. It's typical of us to waver and, flood, uh, and basically forget where the, what God has done in the past and what he's able to do. Because she will have actually looked and said, if this man is here, this child will be well. And we start to blame everybody and instead of foc focusing on God. This wonderful morning, we want to keep our focus on God. In Numbers 29... 21, sorry, uh, verse 9. Uh, Moses put up a bronze snake on a pole. And when anybody amongst the community of Israel looked up to that snake, they did not die. They lived, actually. If a snake bit them and they looked up there, it's God's ways of supernaturally doing things uh, for his people. No wonder the things of God look actually foolish to man. I like what uh, Jesus did with Peter. Jesus started walking on the water uh, in Matthew 14. And uh, Peter called out to him and Jesus said, come. But the moment he wavered, he started sinking. This tells us to put our focus on God. Yes, he has given us instructions. Yes, we are obedient to them. Things may not run the way we really think that they ought to run, but keep our eyes, keep our focus, keep our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. So Elijah carried on the son's widow, and of course uh, we know what happened there. Uh, he stretched himself on the child several times and cried out, and the child came back to life. The third thing I want us to focus on is uh, God instructing uh, Elijah uh, to basically tell King Ahab that he will reign. And this is in uh, 1 Kings 18. In the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, instructing him to present himself to Ahab. God said he will actually send rain on earth. And Elijah, in obedience, uh, was supposed to meet Obadiah, who was the servant of King Ahab. Now, this was a difficult assignment. This is a man who has been looking for Elijah wherever he's been hiding. He's not found him for three years. Remember, he's first in the brook. Uh, when King Ahab decides to go and look at the brook, what God does is uh, he shuts down the provision at the brook and moves him down to the widow's house. Uh, and remember, there's not a place that this servant of God said that they were not sent to go and look for Elijah. So it was a difficult assignment for Obadiah to go and tell Ahab, Elijah, I saw Elijah. And then when they are going to look for Elijah, he's not there. And I ask you this morning, what difficult assignment has God given you? That sometimes is also life-threatening and is exhausting. 
and difficult. I have a friend of mine who has a son who is struggling with uh, uh, drugs, and the father keeps on telling me that this is my mission field. He's a wonderful man uh, when you speak to him, and uh, uh, I've never seen a father who is, because I think the son is almost uh, 40, uh, but I've never seen a father who embraces his children the way that guy embraces them and assures them he's well. And he tells me it's a difficult assignment, yes, but the Lord has given me. And those that are having children are struggling. Uh, I know it's not the easiest thing to do because you're also looking at their future. But in Proverbs 19, verse 2, we begin to see what Elijah was doing. He didn't go and approach Ahab. He approached Obadiah, who was uh, King Ahab's chief servant. So he became, uh, what, he became uh, wise in the, his approach. Remember Jezreel, uh, who was uh, the, the wife of uh, Ahab, Jezebel, sorry, who was the wife of Ahab, had actually killed many of God's prophets. But there is wisdom in following God's word. There is wisdom in how God sets you up to situations. No wonder Proverbs 19 tells us that desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? And in Romans 10 too, it says that, For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. So as you do God's work, ask for wisdom. Do what Solomon did, ask for wisdom from God. And of course, we know what happens in Obadiah meets Elijah, and uh, uh, he, uh, Elijah assures him that, go and tell him, you'll find me here. And of course, Ahab comes, and uh, we now begin to see how people who don't know God and who don't obey God behave, because he met uh, Elijah and begin, began asking him in a very crude way, uh, you're the guy that is causing trouble in Israel. And Elijah says, it's not me, it's you and your family who have refused to be obedient to God. So Elijah was bold and confident. And it reminds me of what Joshua says in Joshua chapter 1, that be bold and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He's facing a king who has been looking for prophets, killing them, and his wife is the one leading this cause. But he chooses to speak into Ahab's face. So Ahab gathered all the children of Israel and uh, as he has been instructed by Elijah, gather them somewhere, let's do something, put the prophets of Baal on this side and I'll be on this side, I'm the only one remaining, then we make a sacrifice and pour water on the sacrifice uh, to the level that you pray and let fire consume that sacrifice. And we will know whoever sacrifice is consumed by fire, we will know that that is God. Now you can only do that when you know who God is. You can only do that and be bold as such if you have read your Bible well, if you have good relationship with God, and if you're following God's instructions. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, we are told that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This is faith. You're telling these guys do this, and I'll do this. <laughs> you need to be very sure of who your God is. Because if it didn't happen, Elijah is the one who was to be killed. But quickly, as we come to an end, uh, we see that uh, uh, these guys were unable to basically do their stuff and he kept on taunting them and they were embarrassed. But Elijah at noonday looked and said, now, gather people around me now. Let's do this. And we know that uh, the fire of God consumed the sacrifice of Elijah. And this morning I'm reminded of Psalms chapter 121. It's chapter, uh, Psalms 121, yeah. That talks about that I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Who will not let your foot slip? And he will be your protector. And he will not actually, uh, it's, the Bible says that your protector will not slumber. Because he who watches over Israel does not, neither sleeps or slumbers. So the Lord is your keeper. 
Elijah was aware of who God was and uh, God's work upon uh, uh, the children of Israel. And he will guard them from all evil. Remember, these are wicked people that you're setting up here. There are 450, and it says as though also another 400 added onto them, uh, who are the prophets of uh, the Asherah poles. So those are 800 people against one man. And Elijah did what God instructed him, and, and the Bible records that he arranged the alt uh, altar according to what God had told him, and this fire consumed it. This is a fire of God. So let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. And I like what Elijah did. He gathered these guys and they were actually slaughtered and, I mean, basically finishing away with these prophets of doom. But Elijah now finally tells King Ahab, it will rain now. And remember this was a dry spell, three years never rained. Three and a half years, sorry, there was no rain. There was no sign of any rain coming. And Elijah told him, begin to go home because it's going to rain. And of course we see uh, Ahab going on his chariot and he's going and Elijah uh, puts his head in the, between his feet and prays. And this is a prayer that uh, 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 is an effective prayer. And God opens the heavens and it begins to rain. And uh, the Spirit of God picks up Elijah and uh, he passes the chariot of uh, Ahab as he's running. In conclusion, some things that we may see here are similar to other passages that are there in the Bible. Because for six times, Elijah kept on sending his servant, is there any sign of rain? The guy kept on coming back and reporting that he had seen nothing. And on the seventh time, he says, I've seen a cloud as large as the fist of a man. Remember, this is a very small cloud. And uh, Elijah said, now let's go. This was the seventh time. And we reminded of, uh, uh, of a passage where Haman was actually sent to dip himself in the Jordan uh, seven times. Uh, as a man of God and instructed him, but on the seventh time is when he was restored and his skin uh, became as, uh, the Bible records as the skin of a baby. A similar passage is where uh, uh, the children of Israel circle around the city of Jericho and on the seventh time is when the wall came down. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking perhaps, Pastor, Will this be our seventh time that we need to set up a moment of prayer for us to have breakthrough as Northgate? Because for six times, perhaps nothing much has moved moving. This week, we are being called to a moment of prayer and fasting. I pray that every member of Northgate will engage in this moment because this is the seventh time that God may be setting us up for breakthrough. Perhaps let me drive it home to you. What in your life have you begun to st start giving up? Is it somebody you're giving up on? Uh, perhaps a sibling, perhaps somebody uh, lost in uh, alcohol and drugs, perhaps uh, you've been applying for a job for many years and it's not, not been going through. Perhaps this is your home stretch. What are you giving up on? Is it a recovery from a disease? Or recovery from situations? Uh, and they're very heavy sometimes. Uh, perhaps this is a moment that you're looking and saying, let it go. But this is a time that God may be asking you, pray again, because this is your seventh time. As we close, my prayer is that we may put our eyes, just like Moses had told the children of Israel, put your eyes on God, put your eyes on God, put your eyes on God. And my prayer is, may we focus on the Alpha and Omega May we focus on he who has created us. May we focus on God. Because perhaps this is the last moment that God is asking you, go on your knees and just pray. And I'll come through for you. As we come to an end, I'd like to pray with many of us that perhaps are having their faith waver, uh, perhaps feeling that 
these situations are weighing down on them. This is the seventh time. Let us pray. Our God and our Master, we thank you for this passage. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. Because the seasons of yesterday are the same today and forevermore. There are seasons that, Father, you sp whatever happened in the past, Father, is what can still happen today. You are God of extraordinary deeds. You're still the God that can tell us to do some things that, that may not make sense to the world. Perhaps it's that last application. Perhaps that's just that last glance at our computer screens and just say, let me do this once more. Perhaps it's the last chance of just saying, let me just pray and stand with somebody who needs recovery, perhaps from an illness, or somebody who just needs our support. And as Northgate Father, we are speaking into the seventh situation, seventh time, Lord God Almighty. May this be the season that you come through for Northgate and settle this church in Jesus' name. Lord, we just want to exalt your name. Perhaps this is a moment that, Father, we just need to now focus on you as an individual of Lord God Almighty, somebody who needs to receive you. Perhaps this is the seventh moment. Perhaps this is the moment of just putting their focus on you and coming to know that, Lord, you are God in their lives. I like what Elijah said, that this is God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, Lord, we serve a living God. We serve a God who never changes. Therefore, Lord, we can be confident enough coming to you, Lord God Almighty, because what, Father, we cannot achieve on our own, we can achieve it on our knees. Because, Lord, you are the God that hears us. Father, somebody who is just listening to this and wondering, what is in there for me? Lord, may they just go on their knees and pray the seventh time. Because, Father, you are God of finality. And Lord, a new season, behold, is coming forth, King of Kings. In the midst of this famine that you're experiencing, either in work situations, in home situations, wherever we are, Lord God Almighty, we know that, Father, we can go on our knees and it will rain and rain heavily, King of Kings. Therefore, when we have no hope and when we can only see a cloud as, as big as a man's hand, Lord, we know that, Father, you can make the whole atmosphere change on our behalf, King of Kings. Therefore, Father, we are confident that what your word says, Lord, Father, will come to fruition, King of Kings. Lord, we pray that, Lord, may we turn to your word and listen less to what the world is telling us, but, Father, put our focus on your word, King of Kings. And I pray that Northgate will be a church where people go back and just read the word of God as the Bereans did, King of Kings. Such scripture, know what God is speaking to you. So that you don't have to rely on news. You don't have to rely on what other people are saying. Because what God is saying is what is important. Thank you, King of Kings. And we bless you. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. In line with the benediction, I would like to look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, where Jesus replied to his disciples and said, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here, and you'll move. Nothing will be impossible to you. Church, this is a very powerful tool that God has given us, and it's a tool of prayer. That we can move mountains, we can move situations in our life, and nothing is impossible to our God. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. As we face the week, let us know that prayer moves mountains. In Jesus' name. Today